Today in the Wadigan Forest, we are hoping to get video of the hovering honey eater, one with similarities to the hummingbirds of the Americas. Hear that ticking sound? That is what we're after. And look, there he is, the Eastern Spinebill. What a spectacular bird. This is the male. There is sexual dimorphism and the female is more grey and fawn, but still a special bird in its own right. The genera name for Spinebill is Acantharynchus. We have two species, the Eastern and the Western Spinebill, and all Spinebills in Australia are addicted to sugar. Spinebills are extremely active. They will dart, going from flower to flower, chasing one another through the forest. They like sclerophyll forest. They also like plenty of flowers. And here you'll notice the spinebill is eating from a yellow flower. They do prefer red, as do the hummingbirds of the Americas. They also like plenty of water. The hummingbirds virtually drink their own body weight in one day. I'm not too sure how much a spinebill has, but certainly if there is water around, he will be there frequently. The ability to hover is the distinctive thing of a hummingbird. If we look at the way honey eaters in Australia hover, it's a little bit different. If for instance is a brown honey eater, he hovers a little bit, but really he hovers to get to a perch. He eats from the perch next to the flower, not while hovering. And here again is a Fuscus honey eater. He is hovering to get a better perch at a watering hole. The hovering of the honey eaters that we've seen at this point is rather erratic. There is no stillness in it. The main thing about the hovering of a hummingbird in the Americas is that they hover to feed. The hovering of most of the honey eaters is indeed to get a better perch but they can hover. But look at this Fuscus honey eater. He's all over the place. His wings, instead of being fixed, are moving at the elbow and the wrist. He gets no lift from the upward stroke in contrast to a hummingbird, which gets lift both with the downward and the upward stroke. Hummingbird lift is enhanced by the figure of eight rotational movement at the humeroscapular joint. The larger the honey eater, the more difficult hovering becomes. Look at this grey-headed honey eater. He can hover, but it's only because the wind is blowing at him. Hummingbirds can not only hover, but they can hover and feed. One other point of distinction between hummingbirds and honey eaters is the ability to sustain a hover. The bigger the honey eater, the hover duration diminishes inversely. In Australia, there are honey eaters that can hover while feeding. Look at this dusky honey eater. He's doing a good job hovering, feeding, his tongue's moving in and out to get the sap out of the flowers from the grass tree. This dusky is doing a nice hover, not as mechanical as a hummingbird, but still a very clean hover. The spinebill is the most competent of the honey eaters, capable of hovering and feeding on nectar at the same time. There is a hierarchy in avian nectar feeding. First of all, the more numerous the birds, the more likely you are to get nectar because that group of birds, particularly honey eaters, will drive other honey eaters away. The next hierarchy is important in this situation. It's the size. And the spinebill being one of the smaller honey eaters, can't chase too many birds off. You can see the silver eyes, which it does chase away, but when a larger honey eater comes by, the spinebill will give away. Spinebills don't have large communal groups, so they have to function more as individual units. Now here we have the shot that we've been waiting for, the hovering spinebill. It was quite dark in the forest at the time, 
so we don't really have a freezing of the wings. But you can see the hovering, and in slow motion, this is at half speed, the wing beat is between 12 and 15 beats a second. Notice that this bird is hovering to get nectar. He is putting his bill into the flower, just like a hummingbird. His tongue is protruding. The feathered tongue of the honey eater and spinebill is not as effective as the hummingbird in extracting nectar, but it is still quite effective. The hummingbird has a tongue that is split. As the tongue goes into the flowers, this split is widened, resulting in a pumping action and quick extraction of nectar. Another Australian bird that is very good at hovering and gathering nectar at the same time is the sunbird. This is found in northern Australia. However, this is not a honey eater. DNA hybridisation shows no relationship between these two birds. In spinebills, the male and the female are quite different in the colouring. They are very similar in size. This sexual dimorphism is not common amongst most of the honey eaters in Australia but yet it is common amongst the hummingbirds of the Americas. The female hummingbirds are not quite as intense in the colour and also they are a larger bird. One last comparison between spinebill and hummingbirds is in the way the birds call. Spinebills tweet with a minimal opening of the bill. Many Australian bush birds in song really open their bill and sing. This is classically seen in the whistlers and fairy wrens, but the spinebill, the ticking sound is created more by throat movements than opening the bill. The same is true of the hummingbirds.